Our second scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 8 through 11, and can be found on page 235 in the New Testament section of your Bibles. Hear the word of the Lord. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Some give freely, yet grow all the richer. Well, I surely hope that 35 years of faithful service to this church has helped our own dear Kathy grow richer in ways that are meaningful to her. I know that she certainly has served below scale for organists for many, many years, and that she has done so joyfully. She gives back far more to the church than I can imagine any church truly being able to compensate her for because she has a generosity of spirit that puts many of us to shame. And she has such amazing talent that my egging friends last week were talking about how wonderful the organist was, including the one whose child made fifth chair as at the music conservatory in his freshman year. If you can impress Robin, you can impress anyone. We are truly blessed to have such a gifted musician at all, to say nothing of ha having been so richly blessed for so long. Kathy, you hold the record for length of service at a particular church for any organist I have worked with or even personally known. You beat out the previous record holder by three years, and you're still going. Given that today is a day that we have chosen to celebrate this lovely lady, it seems some thoughts on faithful service are in order, so I looked for scriptures to go with that theme for the service. It's a big theme in the Bible, and there were many to choose from, but I chose the two I did because I thought they were most fitting for an amazing and dedicated organist with a great sense of humor and a generous spirit. The Proverbs passage talks not only about those who give freely, growing richer, but also about the generous being enriched. And as I look around this congregation at the people who are part of the choir and part of chimes and who enjoy the music here, as I think about the fact that this church really is kind of known as the music church of the area with all the various groups that have come through these doors to perform and rehearse, as I consider the gift to me personally that the choir and Kathy are each week, I know without doubt that Kathy is one of the linchpins that holds this place together. Sure, the church could survive if she decided to up and retire to Bali or some such nonsense, though you are not allowed to do so during my reign of terror, but it would never be the same. I have had to try to find replacements for musicians in two of the three churches I have served as a solo pastor, and let me tell you, the pickings are slim. Even in large churches, with big budgets to pay full-time musicians, finding a good organist who also leads the choir and participates in the life of the church and does it all with a cheerful attitude the overwhelming majority of the time and without even having a hint of, it's all about me, is extremely rare. To have been blessed with such a gift for 35 years is of far greater worth than most people realize. To get glorious music out of a small choir of volunteers is a greater skill than most people realize. It takes not only talented singers, but a wise and dedicated leader to select music that will help them shine. We know that Kathy's generosity is amazing, but I know that this church family enriches her as well. The love that the choir and congregation have for her has helped her get through some hard times, most notably some very extremely hard times with the loss of Russ, who we all wish could be here today. I told Kathy, that she should take whatever time she needed, and if there were days that she just didn't feel like she could come, to just text me, and we would figure it out. But she came anyway, and told me that being here 
with all of you, making music helps her heal. That's a testimony to all of you. That kind of thing is what this passage is talking about. A generous person might not be enriched in monetary terms, but is surely enriched in those things that are priceless, like love and friendship and support. The other passage I chose from 1 Peter is probably not a familiar one. After all, 1 Peter is not exactly what leaps to mind for most folks when you say, hey, name a Bible book. But this particular passage seemed to capture some of who Kathy is, from the top of her head to the tips of her organ slippers. Maintaining love and allowing it to cover a multitude of sin, anyone who has ever rehearsed with any choir anywhere knows that that has to happen. There are musical sins committed and they must be covered. But Kathy takes it beyond rehearsal to not getting upset with me when I mess things up, like for the first several months I was here, failing to remember I was supposed to serve her communion first so that she could play. I think I finally have that down. She has allowed her love to cover sins in her role as the mo one of the moderators of the deacons and as a valued member of the worship committee when we don't always do the things that she thinks might be best, but she loves us anyway. Kathy even lets love cover a multitude of sins when she pops in and I am less prepared than I ought to be in planning ahead or I'm wearing my grumpy pants on any particular day. She still smiles that glorious smile and it makes the day better. Hospitable, she has it in spades. Kathy makes sure that people feel not only welcomed to the church in general, but to be part of the music program, whatever their skill level might be or might not be. And she doesn't even scowl at the substitute chime ringer who hit an awful lot of wrong notes that one time I was pressed into service. She leads the charge in encouraging hospitality among the deacons and the choir when it comes to taking on coffee hour from time to time, and I've heard tell she throws a heck of a party, too. Like stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. This verse is the main reason I chose this particular passage as we honor Kathy. A good musician is a gift. A good church musician is nearly priceless. A great church musician who sticks long-term even while being part-time, that is evidence of God's grace. Seriously, in the eight years that I worked on Long Island, we had some good church musicians, but in eight years we went through a combination of six different church musicians. It's not because the congregation was a bad one, but because the job itself is tough. It has weird and seemingly random hours. It prevents traveling at the holidays, and it requires the ability to work with a wide variety of people with varying skill levels, those would be the musicians, and varying people abilities, that would be the pastors. And Kathy has done it here in this place for 35 years. Think about that, 35 years. 35 years ago, I was a teenager in high school. It was the 1980s. Internet wasn't a thing. Cell phones were kind of rare and roughly the size of a brick. Kodak was in full swing. Reagan was president. The Soviet Union was still a force to be reckoned with, and Kathy was here playing the organ, rehearsing the choir. She has served this church faithfully through everything that has come along in all that time, through the various pastors, the births, the deaths, the celebrations, the tragedies, the times of bigger budgets and the times of tightened belts, and all the other times that there have been. You can tell she loves to play, but no one stays in a church musician job for that long unless it is truly a way of sharing God's grace in service to others, offering up the very best kind of stewardship of the gifts that she has received. Kathy has lived as a steward of the manifold grace of God, and we could all learn from that.
And that brings us to the last bit of our passage today, the part of speaking as one, speaking words of God, serving with the strength God supplies, and doing it all to the glory of God. I have served in churches where the musician, skilled though he or she may be, practiced and played and directed for the joy of glory in this life. Each performance was geared to garner applause or recognition, affirmation, or compliments. Sure, they were largely people of faith too, but there was a difference that shows. They were performing for themselves and their audience. Kathy doesn't do that. Kathy plays beautifully, directs wonderfully, picks up the extra chimes while also simultaneously directing, and does all of that for this church family, but for God's glory. She doesn't do it for accolades or ego strokes, but for the joy of making music for the Lord. I have the best seat in the house, because I get to see her face while she's playing for God. And I can tell you, we are mere spectators of a connection that is hers alone when she plays. We are blessed with the opportunity to glimpse the love that she and God have for one another, to hear the glorious notes that express that love, talent given as a gift to a person who can appreciate it, and talent offered up in thanks to the giver. Kathy's a blessing to us, showing us in the way that she lives her life and does her job here, what these passages of scripture can look like in real life. She's an inspiration to me and I know to many of you. She is a gift and a faithful servant and I hope and pray she chooses to continue that faithful service for as many years as it brings her joy and that she shares all of those years with you here in this church. Treasure the person and treasure the time and treasure the grace God bestows on all of us in the gift that she shares so generously. Thanks be to God for the gift of Kathy. And amen.